Sunday, glory to God. And Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you, Lord God. I thank you for this opportunity, Father God, to come before your people in your presence, Father. For I declare, Father, your word that says that in your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore, Father. I thank you for your faithfulness, Father, and how you watch over your word, how you watch over your word to perform it in our lives, Father God. You make haste, amen. I thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness, Father, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God, that your word is life unto those who find them and help to all their flesh, Father. I thank you, Lord God, that the entrance of your word gives light, it gives understanding to the simple, Father. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name for this opportunity, Father God, to minister your life to your people, Father God. I thank you for your faithfulness, Father God. I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, that you are not a man that you should lie, neither the son of man that you should repent, Father God. For have you said it, shall you not do it? And have you spoken it, and shall you not make it good? I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Father, for your word is life unto those who find them, Father. May we find your words today. May we hear your words, Father, because we see it after the Spirit, Father God. For we know, Father God, that the natural man cannot receive the things of God, neither can he know them, because they're spiritually discerned. And Father God, therefore we declare we see your word and we see your spirit after your spirit. Amen. I thank you, Lord God, for your word is life. Amen. <coughs> thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name for this precious day, Father. Thank you for those that will partake, Father, today and those that will partake in the future, Father. I thank you, Lord, for your precious Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I wanted to start today with a 
with the scripture that was brought out uh, during a during the Kingdom Summit meeting, and let me post that YouTube uh, channel up or YouTube playlist. I'm sorry. And this is from a conference that happened between uh, on June the first and June the second, and uh, it was three subjects, and they were fatherhood, sonship, and significance. And uh, like I said, if you haven't listened to these, I would encourage you to listen to them and to listen to them again and again, because there's a lot of uh, a lot of revelation there that the Lord started pouring forth and, and beginning to bring understanding to His people. And not to say that this understanding hadn't already been out there, but now, on a more massive scale, the Lord is revealing His plans and His purposes. Amen. And all along, Amen. He wanted, He had fathers, and those fathers should be raising sons. Amen. And that's what he did. The father raised up a son. His name was Jesus Christ, Lord of God. And the father was pleased with the son. The scripture says that in Matthew, right? Let me go to that scripture right quick. Matthew. I think it's Matthew 3, 7. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Well, what we need to understand about that statement is that Jesus was uh, 30 years old when that happened. Well, what happened prior to that, right? What happened uh, in this process between the age of that we know of 12 and 30? Okay, something happened, amen? And uh, so in that time, the scripture says of Jesus, right? Talking about the, the Son, Jesus Christ, amen. Um, let me go to that verse. Luke chapter 2. And I'll read the story here. We'll start off with... Um, Let's start with verse uh, 44, Luke 2, 44. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinfolk and acquaintance. acquaintances. But when they found him not, talking about Jesus, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. They were looking for him. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. All right. And all that heard him were astonished at him, at his understanding and answers. Okay. And when they saw him, they were amazed. Okay. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt thus with us? Okay. Why has thou dealt thus with us? <clears throat> Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. They were sad, amen. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Okay? He must be about his father's business. That's what he said. Now, the word business here is... Uh, he was doing his father's business. Okay, let's just begin with that. In verse 50, he says, And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. Okay? And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in his own stature and in favor with God and man. Okay? So he increased in wisdom and stature in favor with God and man. So, it says that he was subject to them, okay? And this is something that Brother Jeff brought out on, uh, on, this, on the meeting when he was discussing sonship. And so now, it says that he, 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 um, he was subject unto them. That word subject, that word subject is the Greek word hupotasso. Okay? 
Hupotasso is a Greek word that means to be subject or to be submitted under. So Jesus came and submitted himself to them. And you never hear any more between that time and um, and the time that you heard the Father saying, um, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Well, what was he pleased with up to that point? <clears throat> All right. This is the first time we heard him say that about Jesus. He was pleased because Jesus subjected himself. All right. He made a choice and he did the will of God, which he knew the will of God because he was a word, man. He knew the word. We know he knew the word because he was sitting there and discussing with the doctors, right? And uh, telling them things that were astonishing. They, 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 they were astonished. Okay. So we know that, that he was a word man. He, we know that he stayed in the word. He studied the word. Amen. He read the, the Old Testament because <clears throat> that's all they had. They didn't have the New Testament. <laughs> And it says that uh, in verse 47, all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. Who, who wouldn't be, right? What do we do today when we got an individual that's super gifted and talented and, you know, he's got all his gifted and talented skills, they put him in all these classrooms. Well, they try to get him going through the circuit, get him graduated, get him in college, and by the time he's 14, he's graduated college. <laughs> that's just, I'm just... You know that's not true, but what I'm saying is, is that they, at a young age, they, they realize someone has a, a lot of grace and a lot of ability to understand, and all of a sudden they want to build on that. Well, the point I'm getting to here is that Jesus, he understood the way of the Father, right? So let's go look at a scripture in, uh, in Job, Job chapter 10, verse 12. Okay? Thou hast granted me life and favor, and thy visitation has preserved my spirit. After these things thou hast hid, and these things that hast thou hid in thine heart, I know that this is with thee. So thou hast granted me life and favor, and thy visitation has preserved my spirit. <clears throat> well, in the word of God, we read about Jesus a while ago, and the scripture says that his mother and father were looking for him. So we understand here that <clears throat> the visitation, in other words, any time... We get visited by authority in our lives. That's that's the will of God. We all should be submitted to authority. The scripture says in Romans chapter 13, right? Verse 1. And let every soul be subject to the higher powers. For there is no power, right? Let me go quote that direct here. Romans chapter 13, 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. And the powers that be are ordained of God. Okay, every time you see the word power there, it's the Greek word exousia, which means authority. So when you read it with that word, let every soul be subject unto the higher authorities. For there is no authority but of God, and the authorities that be are ordained of God. Right? They're all authorities are ordained of God. Now the people and the ones that are in authority may not be of God, but that doesn't mean the process and the principle of authority is not of God. Okay? And we've got to make that distinction because regardless of who the individual is and those that are in authority, whether they're competent, whether we think they're competent or not, whether we think they understand and know what they're doing or not, it does not matter. We must be submitted to authority everywhere we go. So the scripture says, again of Jesus, that thy visitation has preserved my spirit. Well, what happened here? So Jesus came, authority spoke to him, and he submitted himself. Amen? That's what he did. And because of that, Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. And so from this point up to the time he was 30, when he stepped into his ministry, amen, when John the Baptist baptized him, as the scripture says that, and lo, from heavens, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Weos, son, in whom I am well pleased. And can you imagine for all that time, so that's what, eight, eight and ten, eighteen years, Jesus was submitted to his father and mother, doing everything that they asked, no questions, no murmuring, no complaining, right? Everything that they asked him, he did it. And what a joy to have someone completely submitted in attitude and obedience, and to have that individual obeying and representing and not substituting, but building and crafting 
tables and chairs to exact specification because Jesus was a carpenter. What do you think they did? They worked on wooded wood items, right? They built things. They made chairs and tables. And so, and so we understand here that, that Jesus, again, was doing the will of the Father. All right, so, like I said, what a joy to have someone completely submitted in attitude. Well, Jesus, again, doing the will of God here in this, uh, in this passage in Luke chapter 2. So, again, he was submitted to the will of God, amen. He submitted to the purpose of God in his life. And uh, which was to come under authority. He understood that it's time. It's not time for me, right? So the scripture says in Galatians chapter 4. Let me go to that one. See, all of us are sons and daughters of God. The question is, is are you ready to step into what God has for you? And, and right now, you know, for many of us, we haven't even went through the process of understanding what it means to be trained up properly in the kingdom of God. And so therefore, uh, Many of us are still babes, you know, young, immature in the things of God, right? So it says in Galatians 4.1, now I say that the, <clears throat> Galatians 4.1, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from his servant, from his servant will be Lord of all. The word child there is napios. There's five Greek words that speak of the spiritual maturity of a Christian. Napios, pation, technon, weos, and pater. All these are Greek words. Napios means no speech. Okay, it means you don't have anything to say right now. You just got born again, and therefore you, uh, therefore you you probably know two scriptures, right? John three sixteen, Roman ten nine and ten, Romans ten nine and ten, and, that, and that's fine if that's all you have in your in your in your uh, in your in your repertoire, if you will. In other words, in your heart, amen. But what I'm getting at here is that the scripture says of, of Jesus that. He had to come back and submit himself, okay? And as, as we see here, we're going to see in a minute, uh, this chapter in Galatians 4. And the other word is potion. Potion means like a potty stage. You, you see, you're starting to walk around, look like a little man, but you're still making a lot of messes, pooping a lot, and having your diapers need to be changed. And then you have technon. Technon is like your teenager. And in the body of Christ, that's what we have primarily as technons because they've never went through the process of understanding what it means to be a son, a fully mature son, which is the next Greek word, weos, okay? And then, uh, and then it's pater, which is fathers. So a weos is a, the son of God, Jesus' son of God is the weos of God, the fully mature son, okay? And going back to Luke chapter 2 real quick, just to show you an example here, it says that... Um, Where was it? Where it said. Mm, son. Okay, verse 48. She says, And when they saw him, they were amazed, and his mother said unto him, Son. Okay? The word son here, okay, is the Greek word technon. Technon is like a, about the age of a teenager. So, G, so his mother said to him, Son. Addressing him at the age that he was at, you know, why have you dealt thus with us? And as a technon, you do that a lot. You make a lot of messes, okay? You, you involve the things. You think you're ready for the for the keys to the car. But as soon as you get the keys, you're burning the tires, right? You're spending uh, all these resources and getting tickets and stuff. And, and it just indicates where you're at, okay? And your maturity with the Lord. In other words, for example... Uh, you, you do things that you think are of God, but it's not, right? All right. Well, so again, going back to uh, to Galatians, okay? Verse 2. So it says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, differed nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. So Jesus, under tutors and governors, his father and mother, and those that educated and trained him, until the time appointed of the father. Even so, we, when we, we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, amen, verse 4, 
God sent forth his son, we us, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that he might receive that we might receive the adoption of sons. In other words, that we might come to that place when we're fully matured in the in the Lord, because the adoption of sons is a Greek word fifty two oh six, which is which means that it's it's um we, I don't even know how to say that, but the point is, is that this is a fully matured son that's been adopted. Okay? So, again, uh, Jesus was the son of God. He came into maturity, and, and when he came into his maturity, that's when the Lord unveiled him to us. And the scripture says in Romans chapter 8, right? Just look, look at that. Romans chapter 8, verse... Uh, verse 19, Romans 8, 19, For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. And what that simply means is that all of creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Manifestation means unveiling. It's like taking the blanket off or the cover off of the 2020 model, right? We haven't seen the 220 model. We know what the 2019 model looks like of a specific vehicle. And when they unveil it, that's what they're doing. They're revealing. They're taking it off. They're showing it. And so that's what God did at the appointed time of Jesus is he unveiled him. And that's what happens in our lives when we're ready and we're ready to be given to the people, given to his service, given to what the Lord has called us into. He unveils you and me. All right. Now, I want to go to a scripture now in John chapter 16. And I'm going to read a few verses uh on this specific word that's in this chapter. John chapter 16, verse 16. Okay? Let me start with verse 15. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. See, the reason all things are mine now because I'm mature. I can be, I am responsible. I can take care of it and manage it even as my father would. And for example, I did it from the time I was 12 to the time I was 30. Therefore, I was proven that I could do it. And this is talking about Jesus. And I'm talking about Jesus. So you and me as sons of God, wherever you're at, whatever jobs you have, whatever situations you have, as daughters of God, as sons of God, in every situation to your to your husbands, to your, to your jobs, uh, everywhere, right? Submitted to authority with no attitude. Verse 16. A little while and you shall not see me. And again a little while, and you shall see me, because I go to the Father. Okay? So he was telling them here that I'm not going to be with you in, in a sh short time here. I'm getting ready to be crucified, in other words. And that's exactly, obviously, what happened. Amen? So, again, <clears throat> this word, because I go, that word go is the Greek word, hupago, H-U-P-A-G-O. And listen to what this word means. It says to lead under, to bring under, to withdraw oneself, to go away, to depart. To lead oneself under. Okay, so that's what happened. Jesus Christ, now that he had finished his work in the earth, came now and submitted to the Father. And that's the only reason you have authority is if you submit to authority. There's only two things you can do with authority. Represent and substitute. Represent means that you're doing it exactly as has been revealed to you and given to you, right? And therefore you represent re -pre what has been given to you, what has been asked of you. So, um, and then substitute obviously is doing it your own way. So for example, we have the Word of God here. The Word of God, for example, tells us in Psalm 1, 1, Blessed is he who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, right? The scripture says, blessed is he who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. What does that mean? That means you're not getting instruction and input from those that are not serving God. And if you are, you're not going to be blessed in that endeavor, whatever it is. So, for example, it's not a problem for you because you're in baby land, Babylon, and you invite someone that's, uh, that lost his life partner, for example, so that individual is of a certain order, right? It's called Malakos in the scriptures. Matthew 4. Let me read that one to you. Matthew 4, I think it's 23. Malakos, Matthew 4. 
23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. The word manner of disease is the Greek word malakia. And it means softness, debility, innervation. When you're, when you're, when innervation means you've lost all strength for no apparent reason. And what am I saying here? Innervation, this, this malaki, malakia is demonic, in other words. Okay? There's no apparent reason for you to lose your strength and all of a sudden you're zapped. That's a demonic presence. And then it comes from the word, Hebrew word, I mean Greek word, malakos, M-A-L-A-K-O-S. And this word means soft, soft to the touch, metaphorically in a bad sense of catamite. I mean, I'm sorry, metaphorically in a bad sense, effeminate, and it says, of a catamount, of a boy kept for homosexual purposes with a man. Of a male who submits himself to his body to unnatural lewdness of a male prostitute. That's Malakos. So Jesus had to deal with that in his day. It's no different for us today. It's everywhere, right? And and another thing about this is that one of the, one of the, the focuses and the purpose of this deep devil is to keep us at a place where we lose our strength, where we no longer want to stand up for the cause of the kingdom of God, right? We don't want to champion God's cause anymore, so we give up and we relax our position and our and our and so in one place you you had an understanding of God and as far as and the things that God has been revealing to you in a certain matter, and then you start relaxing your position back. Well, that's the enemy wearing us down. It's called the wearing down of the saints, okay? As it reads us in Daniel. But the point I'm getting to is that <clears throat> Jesus had to deal with that too. And so do we in today in this, in this age, obviously. <laughs> but it says that I go to the Father right here. Back to John 6, 16, 16. And the word go again is to lead under. Now, look at this word to. The next word, I go to. The word to is the word pros, P-R-O-S, which means to the advantage of. So Jesus Christ, he says, I got to go because I, I'm going to go and submit myself back to the Father. Right? And that doesn't mean I wasn't submitted now. What he's saying is, is I've already finished the work. I'm about to finish the work that I've been given. Now I'm going to go submit it all back now to the Father and see what his next task is for me. Amen. What his next purpose is. And so pros is to the advantage of, so I'm going, I'm submitting back to the advantage of my father. And that's the reason we submit to authority is because we are to their advantage. Amen. And God is noting all this and sees all this as I read in Job. Right? Job chapter 10, 12. It says, Thou hast granted me life and favor and thy visitation has preserved my spirit. And these things hast thou hid in thine heart. I know that this is with thee. You see, Jesus, God acknowledged Jesus Christ. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased after he was baptized. And the spirit of God descended on him like a dove. And now Jesus stepped into, into the full totality of what God had commissioned him to do. You see, the thing about being representatives, represent, is that you're going to do it exactly as been given to you and requested, right? <clears throat> now, as a representative, if you look at that word represent, represent. So re is to do again. Pre is before what I got. Sent is where I'm going with what I got. You hear that? And that's exactly what Jesus did and exactly what you and I should be doing as sons and daughters of God, representing God in the earth to the exact specification of what his word teaches us and what has been revealed to you in the spirit. Amen. Now, so back to that scripture in John 16 now. And I want to read a couple of little verses on that, on that, where that word is used. Okay. So it says, I go because I go to the father. Now, Look at this look at this scripture Matthew 4:10. All right? <clears throat> then said Jesus unto him, talking to Satan, get thee hence Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. Amen. Now, look at that word um, 
where it says, get thee hence. Get thee hence is the Greek word hupago. And what he was saying is, is that you need to come under authority, Satan, because I am all authority. I'm the one that's been given authority. Amen. You understand? You need to come under authority, Satan. Get thee hence. Submit. To who? To me, Jesus. And so the scripture says, submit therefore to God. Resist the devil and he must flee. Guess what, body of Christ? You also can say to Satan, Hupago, man, submit. Because I'm submitted, you've got to submit. Because I'm under authority, Jesus Christ, and therefore, because I am, you've got to go, you devils. You don't have any place here. Praise God. And that's one place where that word is used. And now let's take a look at another one. There's several, several, several. As a matter of fact, this word has been used 81 times in the New Testament. And so, and listen to this one. Leave there for thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. See that? Which is hupago. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gifts. So here he is telling us that if you got out with your brother, you need to go get back, submit to the word of God, forgive him, and release him, and now come back and make your offering. Wow. Verse Matthew, that was Matthew 5, 24, Matthew 8, 4. And Jesus said unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, who pago, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto him, unto them. Go thy way, go who pago, go submit yourself. Praise God. Man. And Jesus said unto the centurion, this is what I was going to get to, I'm going to get to. Matthew 8, 13. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Hupago, go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. Because the man understood authority, and Jesus said, I haven't seen so great a faith in all the earth, and all this time that I've been here. All right? And then he told the man, I see you're a man of authority. Go back and submit yourself to your authorities. Your servant is healed. Amen. That's beautiful. Oh man, that's beautiful. That's Matthew 8, 13. Matthew 20, 14. Take that thine is in Hupago, and I will give unto this last even as unto thee. So this was talking about the parable when the one that was hired for a certain amount saw that the last person that came in and got hired for the same amount. So he's trying to say, I've been doing all this work for all these eight hours, ten hours, and this guy comes in for one hour and he's getting the same pay? That's not right. And Jesus says, whatever is yours, whatever has been promised to you, given to you, hupago. In other words, submit to that because that's what you agreed to. What's it to you, he says, as he, as he goes on and reads, it's, it's mine, wasn't it mine? I can do with it what I want. We see we've got to understand authority here. Man. Uh, same thing with the guy, let's see here. Mark 7 29 every time there was an issue where they dealt with devils demons they had to come under authority because Jesus was all authority and the same thing by the authority of Christ they come under authority of Christ not you but of Jesus Mark 7 29 and he said unto her for this saying go thy way the devil is gone out of thy daughter for this saying hupago you see, come under authority. The devil is gone out of thy daughter. Amen. And that's how it is, is that we have authority because we're under authority. That's the only reason authority is being fulfilled. And this is, in, in all the kingdom of God, that's how God, the kingdom of God operates. We have authority because we're under authority. And so that's what I'm saying to you. Just like Jesus Christ had to come under submission to his parents until the time appointed of the Father... For him to step into the work that God had for him, it's the same thing for me and you, sons of God, daughters of God. Amen? All right. Well, again, and keep in mind that, you know, the thing that keeps us from uh, walking and uh, in that place where we have with God is our own carnality, right? Your own carnal man is what keeps you back from the purpose of God in your life and the will of God. Because you want to do it your way. See, 
The scripture says about Jesus Christ, the stone that the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. Right? And what that is saying is, is that, <clears throat> what that says is that they rejected Jesus Christ. And still today, Babylon, baby land, is rejecting Jesus Christ. They don't want to do it God's way. Right? In the kingdom of God, there is no way that I would bring somebody in that is a known uh, individual that had a life partner, or at Malacos, and present him before the people of God. You're not going to have that in the kingdom of God, but you're going to have that in Babyland, right? That's everywhere. And that doesn't mean that that individual doesn't, <clears throat> cannot be redeemed, because he's redeemed us all. You just have to accept it. And so this individual obviously needs God. Amen? All right, so let's get into our outline now. And now today we're going to be talking about the purposes of the intercessor and intercession. And uh, what, what it is, is in the Old Testament, <clears throat> God set it up this way. And it says that God seeks intercessors, an intercessor too. Let's take a look at Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30. Amen. I thank you, Father, for your word is life unto those who find them and help to all the flesh. Amen. 2230. It says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand up in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy, but I found none. You see, part of what it means to come into our place with the Lord and what he has for us is for the very need to intercede and to be that man that stands in the gap of that woman in prayer. You see? This is what it means for us to, to be in, in the work of God and be sensitive to the Lord. Amen. Sensitive to His will. Amen. Let me read something to you here. Listen to this. Again, talking about coming into the will of God and understanding our purpose, understanding the work that God has for us. And part of that work is being an intercessor, one that stands in the gap and, and makes up the hedge. He builds up, amen. He stays judgment. He cries for mercy for the people. He intercedes on behalf of, of his brothers and sisters. As he hears, he asks and requests of the Father because God answers the prayer of the righteous, amen. And this is a statement, the will of God is the word of God. The word of God is the way of God. The way of God is the work of God. So when you're in the way of God, that means, and therefore you're doing the word of God and the will of God, you're involved in representing God's word. You are representing the Father in the earth. Amen? <clears throat> and therefore, you're involved in the work of God. You're doing what God has for you because you're representing the word. You know, it's interesting because in baby land, they ordain a gift but they don't ordain uh, what the scripture commanded us to do, taught us to do, is ordain elders in every city and every church. And isn't that interesting that in the kingdom of God, it's ordaining of elders, but in the baby land, it's ordaining of a gift. Laying hands on, you know, ordaining someone because you're an apostle or whatever, you know. And, and so this is, and, and, and like I said, and when you're in the work of God, you see, you need not that any man teach you, say that anointing which is in you, it will teach you. Amen. The things that God has trained and taught you and what he's raised you up to be and, 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 and what you are in the kingdom of God, that's what you do. And that same grace and anointing on your life is the anointing that keeps driving you, teaching you, showing you these things. And what God has in the things that God has given you. Okay. And this part of being an intercessor is, is unto all of us. It's not just a specialized, I'm an intercessor. You should be praying for your sons and daughters, your husbands, your wives, your brothers and sisters, right? the government, the president. You should be doing all these things because the word God tells us to do it. Look at Isaiah 59, 16. Isaiah 59, 16. Isaiah 59, 16. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. 
Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness had sustained him. Verse 17, For he put on righteousness as a breastplate, and an helmet for sal of salvation upon his head. And he put on garments of vengeance for a clothing, and was clad with zeal as a cloak. You see, the man that, that, that did this was Jesus Christ. There was That there was no intercessor. There wasn't anybody who's going to speak on behalf of the people. Who's going to be, represent, who's going to represent you in this case of Satan versus God? And on the side of God, we've got the blood, we've got the Holy Ghost. And on the side of Satan, well, you've got Satan. He's his own defendant attorney. He doesn't need anybody to stand up for him. He's all that in a bag of chips. <laughs> and so it says here that, and, and that, and he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm, God's strength, God's delivering hand, and his arm of strength brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness had sustained him. You see that? Now, look at Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4 and verse 6. Ezekiel. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads. <coughs> of the men that sigh and they cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Where are those that are praying for the nation? Where are those that are praying against the demonic hosts and pushing all that demonic realm back? Where are those that are praying against uh, abortion? You know, the demon of Chemosh and Molech. That they sacrifice their babies to these false gods. Where are those, amen, in Jesus' name that are praying against drug abuse and addiction? Right? This is called methe. Methe is a Greek word for drunkenness in the New Testament. It means any intoxication. Where are those that are praying against those devils, amen? Praying against the devil of methe, pharmacon, which is where we get the word pharmacy in the English that's distributing the drugs. Where are they? Where are those that are praying against poverty in the land? Where are those that are praying against ignorance and teaching those that are ignorant? Ignorant means here that you ignore because you don't think you need to go that way. Therefore, you're ignorant. It doesn't mean you're dumb. It, doesn't mean, it means that you're not understanding the visitation of God. Where are those, amen, that stand in the gap and make up the heads? Just like Jesus Christ and his own brought forth salvation. We need to be doing the same thing, body of Christ, for our loved ones, for the body of Christ. For those in authority everywhere we go. Verse 6. Slay utterly. Is it verse 6? Slay utterly old and young. Both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom the mark. Upon whom is the mark. And began at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men. Which were before the house. Wow look at that. The ancient men. The elders which were before the house. Amen. Mm. Isaiah 62 verse 7 verse 7 and give him no rest till he establish and till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth amen verse 6 let me read that one first I have set watchmen upon the, thy walls O Jerusalem which shall never hold their peace Day nor night, that ye that make mention of the Lord keep not silence. And if you're, in other words, if you're standing before the Father, if you're praying and seeking God, don't hold back. And give him no rest. Give the Father no rest till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. The word Jerusalem means um, teaching of peace, founded peaceful. Double peace, set ye double peace, amen. And that's what he's saying is that till he make peace, the kingdom of God, as the scripture says in Isaiah, the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. In other words, the increase of God's government, theocracy in the earth, is what's going to bring peace in the land. And he's saying, Keep praying for peace. Keep praying for the government of God to be established in the earth, in our own hearts, in, the, in our families' lives, in the lives of those that we know. And the rule of God, the kingdom of God, is the rule of God. And Jesus Christ is wanting to establish that rule first in your own life before you go and take dominion anywhere in the spirit. 
against the demonic realm. First Samuel, I'm sorry. Is Isaiah 43:26. Isaiah 43:26. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Amen. Let us plead together. Let us come together for the cause of Christ in the earth. Amen. As sons and daughters of God, bringing forth the will of God and the purpose of God by prayer and fastings. Amen. Let us come forth together. Amen. Put the Lord in remembrance. Amen. Mm. Put him in remembrance. 1 Samuel 12, 23. Mm. Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right way. <laughs> Only fear the Lord and serve Him in truth with all your heart, for consider how great things He had done. But if you shall still do wickedly, you shall be consumed, both you and your king. It's the same principle here, man. If you're serving God. God is going to fulfill His Word. You're praying the Word. You're praying for your brothers and sisters. You're praying for your family. You're praying for the nation. You're praying for the world. You see? Amen. And God, as He said, but moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord and cease to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right way. Praise God. And thank you, Father, that the good and the right way is being taught to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Samuel was an intercessor for Israel, praise God. And see, we must be accountable to intercede. We must be willing to pray. We must be willing to be taught. And we must be willing to teach others. Accountable to promoting the good news. Amen. And the good news is God is not mad at the world. They need to understand that. Look at this in Psalm 26, 6-7. through 7. Psalm 26, 6-7. through 7. I will wash my hands in innocency, so will I compass thine altar. You see, you can't be in the presence of God with unforgiveness, with guilt and condemnation. You see, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. If you're in Christ Jesus, you're in the righteousness of God. Amen. And so it says here that I will wash my hands in innocency, so will I compass thine altar. Amen. Surround you, Father God. Surround and get before you on my face. Amen. Praying. Praying for these people, praying for the nation, praying for our loved ones. That I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all that wondrous works. And when, Father God, I see your words being fulfilled, amen, in the earth, in my life, in the life of my family, I publish them. I declare the mighty works of God, amen. Look what the Lord has done. Amen. Mm. Praise God. And see, we're accountable to use authority to speak for God's purposes in the earth. Job chapter 22, verse 27. Job chapter 22, 27 and 28. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Amen. When the decree is brought forth, when the word of the Lord is brought forth, so shall the word of the Lord that be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, void but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it will prosper the thing whereto I send it. When we decree the word of God, declare the word of God, amen, the light shall shine upon our ways because the Spirit of God is fulfilling the Word of God. Angels of God are listening to the voice of God, hearkening, and they're strong to do the will of God. They're strong and they do it in strength. Amen. Bless the Lord, ye His angels that excel in strength, that hearken to His voice, and that do His commandments. They do the will of God, the work of God, because it's coming forth out of our spirits. Amen. It's life. It's got the breath of God on it. Wow. Mm. <clears throat> the prophet speaks for God to the people. Amos 3, 7. Mm. Amos chapter 3, verse 7. 
Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he reveals his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Those that are before the Lord God, amen, that are, that are, that are interceding and, and stepping in on behalf of the people everywhere they go, amen, the ones that God brings them to. Because you can't do this religiously. you gotta do, You got to be led in the Spirit. Amen. And it says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing until he reveals his secrets unto his servants and prophets. God's will is being made known. The, the word of God is being revealed. The Holy Ghost is showing us, showing us things to come. And he wants us to announce these things. We need to get it out. We need to declare and decree the word of God. It's got to come out as he's revealing it. John 16, 13, right? And when he, the spirit of truth, has come... <clears throat> He will guide us into all truth. 16.13 For he shall not speak of himself. See, he's not going to misrepresent. He's only going to represent what's being shared with him, told to him to tell us. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He's going to reveal these things, and he wants you to announce them. Show is the word an anagel. An to announce, to make known. He wants you to report it, preach it, publish it. Tell them all the wondrous works of God. Amen. Tell them. Genesis 18, 17. <clears throat> and the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I do? <clears throat> you see? Shall I hide the thing? The, shall I hide the thing? That I want to do in the earth from Abraham? No. It's the same thing with us. You see, God's not hiding anything. But you're not going to get it if you're involved in carnal. <clears throat> the carnal man can't understand the things of God, can't understand the Spirit of God, can't understand the mysteries of God. They, they don't see all this because they're walking in their own foolishness. You see? And it's the same thing with us, amen? If you're walking around in carnality, you're not going to see the purposes and the plans of God come coming forth so he says and the Lord God said shall I hide no he's not going to hide it because he wants his will to be known same thing with us Isaiah 45 11 Isaiah 45 11 thus saith the Lord the Holy One of Israel and his maker Ask of me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands. Command ye me. Declare my word. Say it. Speak it. Pray it. Amen. <clears throat> Don't be intimidated to speak God's word. Don't be intimidated to look at the promises and believe in the promises before you believe for them. An, inter speaks, an intercessor speaks for God in prayer. Amen. That's what he does. That's what she does. Your responsibility in the New Testament is a ministry of helps to assist. Amen. Those that are in authority, those that are doing the work of God, the will of God, those that are preaching, teaching, sharing, the apostle, the prophet, evangelist, shepherds, and teachers, ministering and praying for them, praying to God, bring fresh revelation, bring that fresh anointing, bring that fresh strength, because it's going to be delivered back to the people. And we're responsible to help bring the assembly to maturity by prayer. Colossians 4.12. <clears throat> Colossians 4.12. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring fervently for you in prayer. Prayers that ye may stand perfect and complete in the will of God. Look at that, man. He's praying that we might stand perfect in the will of God. And that should be your prayer for one another, for me, for, for those that are, like I said, all of us, somebody's <clears throat> out there praying for us, praise God. Praying that we would stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. That's beautiful, man. That's so precious. Epaphras, this is the Amplified, who is one, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> who is one of yourselves, a servant of Christ Jesus, sends you greetings. He is always striving for you, earnestly in prayers, 
pleading that you may, as persons of ripe character and clear conviction, stand firm and mature in spiritual growth, convinced and fully assured in everything willed by God. Praise God. He's ripe in character. He's, he's clear in conviction. He stands firm and mature in spiritual growth, fully assured in everything willed by God. It says he labored hard on their behalf of Colossians, Laodicea, and Herapolis. He's, see, we're responsible to cooperate with those in authority. We need to be praying for the body of Christ, praying for those in authority. Bring unity, not to be independent, okay, and not to administrate or rule over. The purpose is to submit, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he must flee. Submit to the authority and the rule of God. Amen? And we're responsible to pray for those who watch over our souls. Psalm 141, verse 5. <clears throat> Let the right... <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let the righteous man smite and correct me. It is a kindness. Oil so choice... Let not my head refuse or discourage. For even in their evils or calamities shall my prayer continue. In other words, those that are over us in the Lord and they correct us in the Lord, receive it as a fully matured son of God or daughter. What son is he when the father doesn't correct? Are we all, we are all children and we're not bastards. Bastards don't receive correction. But a son of God, a we us of God does. And that's in Hebrews chapter 12, I think, verse 5. Listen to this other verse, Proverbs 9, 8. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate you. Reprove a wise man, and he will love you. See, if, you're, if, you, if you get corrected by a brother or sister in the body of Christ, or by those in leadership and, elder, and, ruler, and eldership and so on, in other, in other words, those that are in authority, and you despise it, it says that a scorner, in other words, you're thinking little of what was brought to you and corrected you, you're going to hate. You see, but if you reprove someone that's 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 mature in the things of God and the will of God, and he wants the word of God, he wants to know where he's out of order. He will love you. Proverbs nineteen twenty six: He who does violence to his father and chases away his mother is a son who causes shame and brings reproach. You see that even your own father and mother, right? When we disrespect authority as sons and daughters of our families, of our fathers and mothers, the Scripture says that you're causing shame and you're bringing reproach. Mm, because you don't understand authority. Do not speak evil of authority or of anyone. Dignities, parents, elders, the body of Christ, don't speak of evil. I don't care what they're doing. Right? You need to understand your way and, your, and the way of God in the earth. And you need to understand the purpose of God. What, what is it about? 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 3, 1 through 3. 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 3. Hallelujah. In the Amplified Version, it says, First of all, I admonish you and urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be offered on behalf of all men, for kings and for all those who are in positions of authority or high responsibility, that outwardly we may pass a quiet and undisturbed life, and inwardly a peaceable one in all godliness, godliness and reverence and seriousness in every way. For such praying is good and right, and is pleasing and acceptable to God our Father. In other words, it says there that we may pass a quiet and, and undisturbed life in the land that we're living in. In other words, in this land, in the United States where we're at, and anywhere in the world, you want peace in the land, you need to be praying for those individuals. Praying that God will reveal His purposes and plans to them. If they're not born again, praying that they get born again. Praying against the enemy in his darkness and how he seeks to influence them. By changing laws and rules. You know, in Chicago, another another law got passed that talked again about abortion up to the end of the term. That's ridiculous, man. That is so stupid. Man, that tells you how dumb these devils are. That's what they do. They murder and steal and hate and kill. Romans chapter 15, 30. Hmm. I appeal to you, I entreat you, brethren, for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love given by the Spirit, to unite with me in earnest wrestling and prayer to God in my on my behalf, in my behalf. In other words, pray for me, is what Paul is saying. And now I'll ask you, body Christ, pray for me, amen. Joseph, brother Joseph, amen. 
Pray that the Lord will stay fresh, amen. Pray against the demonic realm that seeks to attack and stop the work of God, amen. Pray, amen, that, that, the, that the blessings of God will come, that I might be able to do the work of God in any situation, amen. Second Thessalonians 3, 1 and 2. Second Thessalonians 3. Furthermore, brethren, do pray for us that the word of the Lord may speed on, spread rapidly and run its course, and be glorified, extolled, and triumphed, even as it has done with you, and that ye may be delivered, now listen to this, from perverse, improper, unrighteous, and wicked, actively malicious men, for not everybody has faith and is held by it. And in the King James Version, that particular, I'm sorry, in the Message Translation, the latter part that says, I'm finding that I, not all believers are believers. Wow. See, not everybody that says they're in the faith is in the faith. The fruit is what's going to manifest and show you where they're at, where he or she is at. We're responsible to be genuine and devoted. Philippians 2.20. Philippians 2.20. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek that not their own, not all things which are Jesus Christ. For all seek their own. They're not seeking the things that are Jesus Christ. And that's what we've got to be mindful of. That that's what we must lay down our lives. That's what we must put down this carnal man. Crucified daily. Daily take up your cross. The choice to make your own choice in life. Choose the word. In other words, choose the tree of life. Choose after the spirit. Don't choose the carnal man. Don't choose your own choices outside of God. Choose God. Choose the tree of life. We must be responsible to be committed, consistent, informed, and thankful. Colossians 4.2. Responsible to give yourself in prayer. Colossians 4.2. Continue in prayer and watching the same with thanksgiving. Amen. Romans 12, 12. Same, I've, I've read these scriptures already many times. I'm going to go over again. Amen. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Continuing instant in prayer. Amen. Always be ready to go before the Father in any given situation. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for this precious time in your presence. I thank you, Lord, for your word that's gone forth. Amen. I thank you, Lord God, that as, your, as, as, they have, as we have ears to hear and eyes to see what your Spirit is saying to the church, God, Father, may we, may, be, may we understand, Father, what your will is. Amen. And, and Lord God, your will is your word, your word is your way, and your way is your work. In other words, we must be doing it your way in the earth. We must represent you, Father, in all aspects of our lives. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy, Lord God. Thank you for the room to grow into the things of God. May we, may, we, may, we, may we all grow up to be fully mature sons and daughters of God in this earth and represent you, Lord God, because we understand and know that all of creation is waiting for the manifestation, for the unveiling of the sons of God. I thank you, Lord God, for this time. And I thank you, Lord God, for your great grace and mercy, Father, in our lives. Thank you how you quicken us, O oh God, in our spirits, Father. And for your divine influence, which is your grace that influences us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. the Lord, sing a new song, lift his name in the congregation, chosen 